I mean, first of all, I, I think people should not invest uh, their life savings in cryptocurrency, okay. to be clear. I think that's unwise. Uh, but, I mean, if you want to sort of, you know, you know sp speculate and kind of like, I don't know, maybe have some fun. I mean, it's like there's a good chance that crypto I in is the future currency of Earth. If you have clicked on this video, you are likely somewhat worried about the stock, crypto, and real estate bubbles now collectively being referenced as the everything bubble. Prices over the last year have skyrocketed to insane levels. The S&P 500 went up 30% since March 7, 2020, Apple 82%, Bitcoin 437%, and Dogecoin over 2000%. But the worst of it can be seen in the newly formed NFT markets. This is where we saw earlier in the month someone purchase a digital LeBron James highlight for $200,000. Yes, you heard that correctly. Someone purchased a LeBron highlight that you can look up on YouTube for free for $200,000. In today's video, we answer the all-important question. How do we invest in a giant market bubble? Understanding these market booms is the key to success. First, we investigate previous bubbles. Bubbles are not a new thing. Put a bunch of people around any sort of market and give it enough time, a bubble will appear. The Dutch society back in 1636 for a small period of time went crazy over the price of tulips. People back then were spending their year's salary on flowers they hoped to sell for more and more. Many on YouTube and the internet love to compare the tulip chart from 1636 to the Bitcoin chart of today and point to it as a clear indication of a bubble forming. But today's bubbles are much different. The psychology is the same, but the dynamics are incomparable. Throughout history, we've had multiple instances just like this, and they all ended the same exact way, with a severe downturn in value. If you step back and think about it, bubbles to investors are not necessarily a bad thing. Remember, calling bubbles is sort of easy. Everyone can see the recent trends, and you would have to be quite naive to think that all of these massive price movements are deserved and healthy. The problem is that bubbles are easy to call, but hard to make money in. Here's what I mean. Let's study one of the most famous cases in history, the internet.com bubble. As you can see, starting in mid-1995, we saw the Nasdaq begin to creep up. By December of 1996, people were already calling out the bubble forming. The then Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan gave a famous speech where he uttered the phrase, irrational exuberance, to explain what may be a stock market that is overvalued. His comments spooked the markets and moved the indexes down in the months that followed. But the bubble was just getting started. By the next summer, the Nasdaq had moved from 1200 to 2000 nearly doubling in value. At this point, the bubble was as clear as day, yet we were still years away from the top being formed. In the fall and winter of 1998, the index moved down sharply to 1500 before its final move up to the very top. If you had invested in November of 1998, nearly one year later in January of 2000, you would have achieved gains of nearly 350% as the market moved from 1500 to 5000. In those final months of 1999, anybody betting tech was making serious money. As the bubble gets ready to pop, the momentum gets more and more parabolic. VA Linux Systems, which went public on December 9th, 1999, was the poster child of the peak. Now we have an IPO that's going to go today, and when I mean go, it is going to go. The estimates I'm hearing are staggering, but watch VA Linux Systems. It goes at 1240 today. The symbol is LNUX, a provider of large-scale computer service and workstations specially designed for the Linux operating system. The original range on this IPO was 11 to $13, then 21 to 23, then 28 to 30, priced at 30. And the estimates I'm hearing, I don't want to repeat because I don't have a confirmation, but if they're true, they will blow your mind when this stock takes off at 1240. On that infamous day, the company went up 698% in one trading session before crashing down to nearly zero by the end of 2001. But it doesn't stop there. In a truly bizarre series of events, VA Linux Systems changed names and hands a few times before being acquired in 2015 by a little video game retail chain called GameStop. Life is truly a circle. But what I meant to show with this example is that you can make serious money during these times and especially towards the end of bubbles. But getting out is the problem. Nobody knows when the top has formed. If we read analyst notes from January and February of 2000, you can see these so-called financial experts can't differentiate this downturn 
from this one or this one. It's not until months later when the prices crash severely that we know that the bubble has been popped. So how can you know the end is near? The simple answer is we can't. But before you click off, I think there is a way to increase your probability of knowing, lowering your risk and giving you a chance to secure some serious gains. This right here is the 30 year log chart for the NASDAQ. As you can see following the crash in 2000, it took the index nearly 14 years to recover back to the peak. Just following the index's 30 year trend, you can clearly visualize the steep divergence from the average in the late 90s. This is not the case with the NASDAQ today. Right now we've got so many catalysts to push the market up even higher. Interest rates are much lower than they were in the 90s. We've got a Fed who loves to support the market and we're coming out of a year long pandemic with severe pent up demand and stimulus money on the sideline. On top of all this exciting new technology companies are pushing the envelope of what is possible with new inventions set to shape the future of the next generation. We are indeed seeing companies with massive valuations, giant gains with little to no revenues, and PE ratios that make your head hurt. But in the grand scheme of things, we are not seeing simple meme companies jump 700% in one day. There have been events that resulted in similar action, but there are different levels, and we just have not reached the amount of euphoria that can be compared to that of the late 90s. The key to watch out for is federal interest rates and emerging economies. If we take a look at the year 2000, there were two clear events that were the precursors before the massive drop. One occurred in February of 2000. Alan Greenspan announced plans to aggressively raise interest rates. Although the market didn't initially react to that, peaking on Friday, March 10th, it was the writing on the wall. On March 13th, news that Japan had entered a recession triggered a global sell-off disproportionately affecting technology stocks. On March 20th, we had the Fed officially raise rates, inverting the yield curve, and we finally had the U.S. Microsoft Corp ruling, which found that the tech giant was indeed guilty of a monopolization. By November 2000, most tech stocks had declined in value by 75%. The next year, we had several accounting scandals and 9-11, and on October of 2002, the NASDAQ 100 was down 78% from its peak. So we do need some sort of catalyst in order to get worried. We just saw that a global pandemic was not enough to burst a bubble if it even could be considered that. Look out for a leading world economy to dive into a recession or for Jerome Powell to directly state he's going to raise rates. Until then, ride the bubble. It can make you very, very rich. Don't forget that this guy, Mark Cuban, billionaire owner of the Dallas Mavericks, founded a little company called Broadcast.com in September of 1995. On April 1st, 1999, it was sold to Yahoo.com for $5.7 billion. Yahoo paid $10,000 per user. Two years later, in 2002, Broadcast.com was discontinued, worth zero. Mark Cuban rides in private jets and owns an NBA team. That is how you ride the bubble. Or as Chamath has said, when the music is on, you have to dance. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to watch more content like this. And check out my new merchandise down below if you want to support the channel.